Hi friends, welcome back. In this short video, I just want to walk through with you my intrinsic value calculations for Tesla. Hope you enjoy it. Let's talk about the methodology first. So in these uh, calculations, I will only consider the auto business from Tesla, which is about 90% of their total revenue. The data is up to 2022 Q3. The DCF is based on the net income, meaning that I take the net income and then I kind of like discounting it back to arrive at the intrinsic value calculations. And I assume the following assumptions. The first one is the future delivery growth rate. And then uh, I also assume that there's a change of the average selling price because currently the price may not be sustainable because uh, they might need to cut the price in the futures, right? So I put that in. And then uh, I also assume some improvement in the net margin. This is mainly because the scaling of the business as some of their um, expenses are fixed and then their revenue will keep on increasing, right? So there will be some improvement in the net margin that I assume in the model. And then lastly, the exit multiple, which is the terminal value. For simplicity, I will only use a 10% discounting in all uh, scenarios here. So let's take a look at the scenarios. Okay, this is the first one is the base scenario. The base scenario, what it means is that this is uh, my best guess on what will be the futures, right? So um, I started out with the delivery numbers, which is about 1.2 million. This is the recent four quarters from Q4 last year and the first three quarters this year up to Q3 uh, this year. And then uh, this is the growth rate. Basically, I assume that the uh, first year growth will be 45% and then it's slowed down to 40%, 35%, 30% and so on. The current average selling price is about 54,000. I assume that the first two years, right, it will uh, drop by 5% each and then it will stabilize at about 49,000 and then it will just flat throughout. When we take the delivery numbers multiplied by the average selling price, that's what we get the auto revenues, okay? And then this is the total revenue. The difference between the total revenue and the auto revenue is mainly their other business, for example, their energy business um, and, and, and so on. And if you just take the auto revenue divided by total revenue, currently it is at 88%. So I assume that this ratio will be constant. What it means is that in the calculation here, I just assume that the auto business is here and then um, I just scale up the ratio to arrive at the total revenue figures. And then the last two will be the um, their profits. We have the gross margin here and the net margin here. I think the most important one is the net margins. Currently, it is at about 14.9%. So I assume that the net margin will increase by 0.5% uh, every year um, and grow from 14.9% to 18.9% uh, by 2030. So you can see here uh, as the delivery or, or the car so uh, increase year over year and the net margin also increase right so after you multiply these two you get a net income which will be increasing uh, ex at the exponential rate so it will start from about eleven thousand up until about 100 sorry this is 11 billions up un until 109 billions as of 2030 then the exit multiple, I just take a 20, multiply by the $109 billion here and get, get a 2 trillion. And the DCF calculations, right, uh, which is a net present value calculations, is just that taking this stream of cash flow, the net income cash flow here, and then just discount it using 10% uh, discount rate. So I get something like a $1.079 trillion market cap. And then also we have the shares outstanding and you take the market cap divided by shares outstanding, you get a $311. Uh, and this is the intrinsic value per share um, based on my base scenario assumptions. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the bull scenario. So under the bull scenarios, what is different compared to the base scenario is that I assume a much higher growth rate. As you can see here, we only assume a as of 2030, it will grow to 10 million delivery. But in both scenarios, I assume that it will go to close to 20 million deliveries, which is Elon Musk's targets. So this is the growth rate. And then uh, on the net margins, it is also different. I assume a 1% increase in the net margins every year. So from 14.9, uh, increase to 15.9 and so on. So it increased to about 22.9% net margin. The exit multiple is also slightly higher at 25. 
So as you can see, um, the other calculation is all exactly the same. It's just that, um, oh, there's one more thing. The average selling price, instead of assuming they will drop by 5% each year in the first two years, I assume that the average selling price will just uh, keep constant. So they are, they are the same. So after revising the assumptions um, and become a bull now, so we can see that the net income uh, amount is much higher. And then uh, if you apply the net present value calculations, you can see that the intrinsic value is about $3 trillion. Divided by the shares outstanding, we get a target price of about $911. So this price is about four times uh, higher than current traded price. Lastly, let's take a look at the best scenarios. What I changed here is just the delivery numbers and also the net margin figures. The delivery, uh, instead of growing to you know like 20 million, right, I assume that they will still continue to grow, but the growth rate will come down very quickly from 40% down to 30, 20, 15, and then just uh, flat at 10%. You will still grow to about 4.5 uh, million cars per year. And then in terms of the net margin, I assume that, that there's no improvement at, in net margin at all. So uh, what kind of scenarios that we can end up uh, having a fixed net margin is that there could be some uh, expenses that we don't an anticipate, right? We, we still don't know now. Let's say the expenses is, is a lot higher, so they are not able to increase their net margin even though their uh, delivery numbers continue to go up. I assume a 5% drop in the average selling price in the first two years and flat uh, thereafter. Um, in terms of the exit multiple, I assume 15. As the company's uh, growth rate drop significantly right so um, the market is not uh, willing to pay so much exit multiple so i just assume a 15 for conservative number and once i apply this and do a dcf right i get something like a 344 billion uh, dollar market cap divided by the share outstanding i get a uh, target price or intrinsic value per share of 100 dollars so as you can see here these three scenarios um, the range is quite wide. Um, I can justify a share price of as low as $100 or as high as uh, $900, right? So I think the key point here is not to say that, okay, because I arrived at the number of uh, $300, so any numbers below $300 is a buy or any um, numbers that is above $500 is a sell. Um, it's not something like this. It is just to um, give you some idea of how DCF uh, works. Uh, basically, it's just garbage in, garbage out. So we can justify a very low numbers or very high numbers depending on what the assumptions that we are using. So for example, if we assume a growth rate of 50% for the next 10 years and then the margin just keep on increasing to 50%, right? Of course, we can justify a much higher uh, intrinsic value. But usually, the market is not totally stupid. So, uh, when the share price is traded at current current uh, valuations is because there's some sort of expectation built into the uh, share price and hence i think the price could be wrong but i won't i, I don't think it kept wrong for a huge order of magnitude and then another key point is that i, I think i should be able to share this uh, working so you can take a look and then you can just put in your own assumptions right you may not agree with me that uh, the growth rate is 45 percent and then down to 22 percent right you can uh, put in your own assumptions and then the ASP assumption, you can assume uh, it is positive or negative. And then finally, the net margins here, you can assume uh, different net margins uh, based on your, your own assumptions, right? And of course, the exit multiple, everyone will have their own assumption as well. Once you put in all these numbers, um, you can do your DCF and see where um, what was your own uh, intrinsic value, basically. So I hope that uh, this short video, you can learn something from here. And then um, I'll keep the video short and we we'll just end here. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, remember to subscribe my channel and then uh, join the Telegram group uh, if you want to join us. Okay, uh, there's a lot of interesting conversation in, in our group. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.